Thank you all for coming. My name is Margot Landman. I'm with the National Committee, where I, among other things, am responsible for our public events. And we're delighted that all of you could come. I think we have an extremely interesting program ahead of us on a truly critical issue, which is water quality, water scarcity, um, water pollution, something that is perhaps not getting enough attention here or in China. Uh, Liu Hongqiao has been working on this for, despite how young she looks, <laughs> quite a long time <laughs> and has prepared a very interesting presentation. I will ask that you hold your questions until she is finished. We are going to leave significant amounts of time for Q&A. You have her bio, so I won't go over it. And with that, I will turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you for having me here. Um, great pleasure. Uh, sorry. Great pl pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't mind, I, I'm going to um, stand and talk more comfortable for me. Um, so um, I was a journalist. I've been covering China's water issues and um, other environmental issues for the last uh, um, six years. <laughs> And um, with this China Water Risk Organization based in Hong Kong, um, I started to do more of my own research, like independent and in-depth research on drinking water safety. Uh, just a quick idea of what this organization is about. It's more like a think tank, uh, but it's a non-profit and it will address business and environmental risk uh, arising from China's limited water resources. So, statue in the scene, what is, what does it look like of China's water issues with <coughs> or other important issues? So we developed this kind of map uh, based on the water per capita water consumption you have, sorry, uh, uh, per, per capita water you have in China and develop this uh, coal mining things. So we can say that over 54% of coal basins uh, in China are in extremely water scarcity areas and 30% are in water stress regions give you an idea of how this whole water, coal, climate uh, dialogue is going on in China. But that's not my field. Um, I'm going to talk more about this mismatch of water scarcity issues and all our increasing my, uh, demand um, for better life, for industry um, <laughs> progress and everything else. So I discovered, uh, I developed this three reports, start on drinking water safety and then to the alternative some people would say it's alternative to uh, the bottled water industry in China, which is surprisingly to many, China has overtaken the US to be the number one bottled water consumption country and one of the uh, largest production country in the world uh, in 2013. But starting from drinking water safety, mainly tap water, rural drinking water, unsafety issues to bottled water, I start to think to myself, what are the real issues to be tackled in the future if we really want to secure drinking water safety in China? Then I look into the water resource, uh, sorry, water sources, mainly um, the polluters, and then I identify mining sector one of the, as one of the largest polluters in China. And then I think to myself, how can I address this mining sector uh, among all these other issues people are caring about? Obviously, there are so many issues around, and I find the rare earth, which is surprisingly interesting um, elements. Um, look at this conference room, we have birds everywhere, in the cameras, in the screen, your smartphone, basically it's everywhere. So it's a way to get people to get connected with these issues. So give you a sense again, so I, would I have been covering China's work issues from tap water securities to soil pollutions to how this uh, big flood in Beijing in 2013 caused hundreds of deaths in a big city, metropolitan cities like Beijing. But then the question is how to translate all these challenges to um, stakeholders, like people sitting in this room and people in academics, people in the White House and in Beijing's central government. Um, we look into tap water quality in China, we find a surprisingly long, um, how to say, the pipeline. Uh, from source to water treatment plants to water transfer and then to tap. Everything, every, every thoughts can go wrong. 
And to secure drinking water safety, we have to secure everything along this train. And the question is really, who gets safe drinking water in China? And we see big cities like Beijing have south to north water transfer projects to transfer water from Yangtze River all the way to Beijing to secure its water resource. And then we see second line, the third line city is who may not have good water sources and the lacking of technology or investment to improve their um, treatment of plants. I mean, with this toxic, polluting, and the contaminated water source, how can you secure the water out of the plant to be clean and meeting the national standards? So in 2012, we had this bo um, a, a bomb in public uh, by disclosing the once classified national survey that less than, uh, less than almost half percent of China's cities, among 4,000 of them, failed to meet the national drinking water standards. And then I followed up with China Water Risk by asking what happened, what changed since the last three years, three years or four, uh, from water source to treatment plants to what works to into your homes, what have changed? And luckily, uh, fortunately I would say, something has changed. We have seen this um, advanced water treatment technologies. The percentage of approved from, improved from 2% in 2012 to 5%. Still not too much, but it's improving. And we see billions of money investing to secure water source uh, in China. And we see, um, I mean, rising, a rising uh, public awareness on this issue. Before that, no one talked about tap water quality. Now everybody's talking about it, and everybody's kind of like walking away from tap because they don't trust it's safe, causing other issues. Um, so in this research, I find, remember I, I mentioned who gets clean water in China. So the question for now is who don't get clean water in China? Those people living in rural areas, people living in second line, third line, people living in small mm -hmm. townships, they don't have good water source, they don't have <coughs> advanced water treatment. And they, I mean, water is basic need to everyone. Um, how is their life improving? Uh, how is the drinking water safety there? Get soft. <coughs> uh, we find so many other issues. So in the 12, five year plan, China government set its ambitious goal to secure, to, to solve this 298 million rural Chinese people to secure they have um, safe drinking water by the end of 2015, which is the end of the five year plan. And we, we see people facing uh, quality issues, scarcity issues. Scarcity issues, by the way, is more difficult to, um, to solve. And I mean, but <coughs> comparing the urban and rural steps to safe drinking water, we find the significant gap um, from investment the large populations living uh, exposed to this unsafe drinking water. It doesn't seem like quite fair. The development is not very balanced. Um, and we compare the budget to solve this problem. We still find rural China, these citizens are not, well, not on the priority target, right? Primary target. But still the Chinese government set, sorry, still the Chinese government set um, rural drinking water safety issue. Completely soft, uh, soft. Sorry. Um, by the end of 2015, according to um, uh, some, sorry, I can't remember who's who speak it. Uh, Li Keqiang Premier Li Keqiang speak about it uh, in the MWR Ministry of Water um, Resources uh, annual meeting. So how does that all sound like the urban? In urban, we have this tap water quality concerns. In rural areas, we have people suffering from getting access to um, drinking water. And we see this phenomenon, China becoming the largest bottled water uh, consumption country in the world. 